So my big thing recently after watching some of the Capcom Cup is I'm kind of sick of seeing big year roundup kind of tournaments be like the defining feature of like multiple esports genres. And uh, you see it in League of Legends with Worlds, you see it with the International and Dota, and now a little bit with Capcom Cup. Obviously, Evo is arguably more prestigious and bigger, but at least what's like really represented by the company, it's this kind of one-off tournament at the end of the year. And I, I see the benefits of it, where it's like this one thing that everyone outside the scene can watch and be like, that's what the big event is. But at the same time, for people in the scene, I actually find it really frustrating because these games are getting changed all the time. There's patches, new characters are introduced, there's a million little things that go on throughout the season. And it's not like a traditional sport where you're just the same roster the whole time. And then at the end of the year, who's the best roster? There's so many things changed. Like, Le like League of Legends killed lane swaps this year. <laughs> and to pretend like this is the same kind of game we were playing you know, a couple months ago is kind of a joke. And I really am just getting, it's, it's so sickening to see like people's careers defined by like one patch change or one big tournament because it's that, that's what it is. It's just the big tournament of the year. And I, I personally am sick of it. I don't know how you guys feel. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, um, you know, the, you mentioned Dota 2, and I think, like, I agree, like, that's a big problem, because when the international happens, like, two years ago when Newbie won, like, they won the international and they won so much prize money that they just retired straight away. That's not <laughs> healthy for the scene. Like, some players just left the team straight away, and it's just like, they, because, you know, they made so much money, they don't need to play Dota anymore. Like, they can retire, retire from the game for a while. And I agree, like, it should be more spread out. It should be like a consistent, like Valve does a really good job with Counter-Strike in that the events and the money is like more spread out over the year rather than just have like one big event. And I know for Evo to use a specific example as well, it used to be people just wouldn't have like other third party organizers wouldn't have tournaments after Evo because after Evo, like no one cares, no one's training anymore. Yeah, post Evo used to be, um sort of like a dead zone like a for over yeah, yeah like there was there dumb. was there were no major major events post evo because that was it that was the super bowl for fighting games everyone would plan their year around evo um i love that they still sort of do that i think evo still for the most part ha holds that sort of that magic um but you know as as much as i gripe about how long the capcom pro tour was this year and how many events there were I just could. I just can't see going through something like it, like a season, without having mm -hmm. a final event that this, this determine. I mean, Knuckle, Knuckle Loose probably not going to retire. I think we're all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just having that defining event, um, and of course, my topic we'll touch on that later. But I, it it just would be a travesty to me to not see. Well, I, that's why I think like you, it's okay to have like a bigger event where it's like this is kind of like the cap off to the season or something. And for League of Legends, they have major patches, so you could say it's the last one before that right. major patch or whatever. But uh, and that's the thing with like fighting games. Well, that's the thing with Street Fighter Five. They purposely waited the year to do any like balancing because they didn't want to. They wanted to see how the meta would evolve, how the players would evolve uh, throughout the course of that first year. So yeah, mm -hmm. there weren't you know any major changes uh, in the game. Right, and in League of Legends there are still, like I said, they right. killed playoffs before yeah. something, and uh, I understand the point of like having a big capstone, but their, their other events are honestly kind of jokes to compare to Worlds. Like, oh, yeah. MSI was really, really hype, and I think if it was a bigger tournament, people would put more credit there, but it's one of each region, and that's it. So, so is the issue more that, that having the, ma the one big event just so, sort of overshadows these other events? Like, do you think that other events should be almost more prestigious? I, it's two things. One, I think when the prize pool is really concentrated in right. one place and your game is constantly changing, you might, like, I think it's just not, like, SKT would probably place really high at every tournament they went right. to, but like, what about Immortals? What about TSM? Mm -hmm. What about um, G2? What about these teams that went and had up and downs throughout the year? Like, the patches influence them and mm -hmm. it's kind of, silly to pretend like it didn't matter. Right. Um, and that's kind of what happens with Worlds. And so there's there's the money side, and then there's the, yeah, the prestige side where it's like, you won Worlds, and everyone considers TSM a failure despite having an amazing summer season. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of strange to see these kind of legacies get really ruined by that. And like people in League don't respect top eights or in like right. semifinals, it's all yeah. about winning. It, it, League of Legends is a problem because they people don't really care who wins. Like, I mean, second place, I mean, even like the Rocks Tigers, people are like, oh, they got second place. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Like, it, 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 I, that's a cultural problem within League of Legends. But for me personally, I, I like you said, I, I like this capstone. I like to have the end of it be like the end of it. Uh, because one of the problems that I have with the way that uh, Counter-Strike is set up is I never feel like I have a proper storyline in Counter-Strike. 
and I and I know the Counter Strike guys are gonna kill me for this, but uh, of, I want a team that is that defines the year. I mean, like there have been times when like Fnatic or NIP have defined exactly what that year in Counter Strike is like, but it, it just seems like whenever there are, or I guess SK this year is, is getting to that point. Uh, but uh, there are, are times where you know a different term is winning or a different team is winning every major, and it's like oh. I guess these are if they're all of equal importance. This is the team of the first quarter of 2016. This is the team of the second quarter of 2016. It, it just doesn't feel as important to me. And I think that this is just purely my own fandom coming out, my own preferences coming out. But like, I, I'd really like to have this sort of capstone. I'm definitely someone who agrees with like a league format in the sense that like Counter Strike up until E League recently, and it's still kind of like, eh, yeah. it's not like the defining league. There's so many tournaments, so many things going on. Whereas a scene like League of Legends has its league, but then you could also have the bigger tournaments so you follow your team throughout that season, sure. and then you see how they do in a tournament, but then it's not like MSI where it's kind of a joke tournament. You want to see your team compete internationally, but you don't want to see it where it matters once a year. Mm -hmm. Like, because CLG, like, talk about their MSI run. Like, that's crazy. No one talks about that anymore because no. they sucked at Worlds this year. They, 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 they lost to a wildcard team. 